In this small video tutorial, I will be talking about gradient and how you can use it to uh, in produce and show parametric geometries. So, in this example, you can see that I have produced a surface and I want to show different colors based on the gradient uh, from the height of the panels. It's just uh, multiple panels uh, covering all the surface and changing the colors. So let's get started. First of all you can produce a surface easily. I can go to uh, let me produce a rectangle here and rebuild it so it has more ISO curves. I have 30 to 30 and that's the surface. Okay, uh, We can use soft edit surface to make it a little bit interesting and change the surface. Okay, We can control it by giving it a number something like this. Okay, This is the base surface. You can choose or make any surface you like and let's import this into Grasshopper. Uh, the second step we need is to produce panels. So the best way if you have a surface, let's assume that we have a surface and we want to make those panels is to use two tools. The first is to use a tool called ISO Trim and what it does is it trims the surface with the ISO curves and it uses a domain 2 input so basically the second tool we combine with is a trim is the divide I'll make it smaller and it's the divide domain 2 and divide domain 2 makes the surface domain that's the domain we have here uh, divided by a U and a V number. So combining this surface ISO trim divide domain 2 which is basically the, the easiest way to make the surface trimmed by uh, equally distributed domain uh, panels. You can use ISO trim divide domain 2 to make this. So if I go and double click and search for ISO you can see that ISO trim is the tool. You can find it in surface utility. And for the domain, which I will be talking about ISO trim later in a video, for those who want to know exactly what ISO trim is, but for in uh, for this example we use divide domain two to divide the surface into U and V. So we divide domain two surface into the domains the domain of the surface is divided by u count and v count so we can give it a number like 25 to 25 and you can see that the surface is divided into sections and the subset of the base surface so this is the fast and easiest way uh, you can produce the subsurface of a surface and now we want to color these subsurfaces <clears throat> based on their heights because we want to make this for example green because it's higher and make this red because it's uh, lower so what we say in our mind is that this is higher because the subset of the surface the subsurface has a point the z of the point is more for this point rather than this point. So I will use the z of the, co the z coordinate of the point to define which one is higher and which one is lower. So uh, let's um, extract the uh, um, centroid of the subsurface and let's go to the surface and choose area and extract the area 
and we have the centroid now we can just go to the uh, vector and uh, what we are doing is deconstructing the point we need the z coordinate of the point the deconstruct point will just give you the x y and z coordinate in different outputs and that's great because you can have the z coordinate of the points uh, in a different output than the x component so uh, what we need is the uh, gradients tool which is actually the base and the main um, uh, base of this tutorial so if I put it in the canvas you can see that it has three inputs you can right click on it and choose different presets and here's the presets and we have a lower limit an upper limit and a parameter here for the color so what should I do is uh, to change these inputs the first is the lower limit and it's zero and uh, and what it means is that the color in the first uh, place is zero so here we have a zero and then it goes to the upper limit so if I check the upper limit it's one and it says that the blue is one so we have a zero and have one and it asks about what we want so if we give it a uh, uh, let me just show you this and connect go to the display and choose a custom preview to color those panels or the surface okay and let's just preview off this and let me give this to the shader uh, if I give a 0 0.2 to the parameter you can see that the color is exactly here if I give it a 0 we have the red it chains and goes to the blue so it's 0 to 1 so what we need is to use this this Z component to produce the colors so uh, let's uh, think about it we need a lower limit and an upper limit of the Z we want to know the minimum and the maximum Z number for the points for the uh, Z component for the uh, coordinate of the points so we can do that by going to the math and uh, going to this bounds tool and if I connect the Z to the bounds it uh, gets the numbers and says that it's uh, from 14 to 60 so the lower limit and the upper limit should be just from 14 to 60 and the the parameter will be the numbers of the Z and we'll give that here so let's just uh, extract those numbers because this is a, that this is a domain output but we need numbers so we want the first and the last uh, number of the domain so we need another step and we go to the domain and we'll choose deconstruct domain so we will extract the first and the last number of domain so I'm constructing this to the start 14 and to the end 60 and let's give this to the lower limit and upper limit of the gradient and the parameter is exactly the Z because it's the height of the subsurface we needed and you can see that we finished the uh, algorithm by giving it to the uh, deconstruct domain and the lower limit and the upper limit you can change the color by right clicking and choosing a preset we can increase the subsurfaces by increasing the number of the subdomain uh, by increasing the number of the divide domain too which we used here and uh, we can see that if I change the surface so let's just soft edit surface this and move this up you can see that the color will change and let's wait till the subsurfaces are calculated and you can see that it's changing 
and we can change the number we can give it a zebra uh, pattern something like this you can make it uh, green to red and that would exactly answer our question because it's uh, using the Z component of the points to pick up from the gradient bucket of colors and you can play with this you can use a point attractor to color a facade for example you can use a curve attractor you can use image to make colors I will be covering all of these point curve attractors image attractors using sound using uh, Arduino kits using whatever you want to produce uh, colors we can produce extrusion we can produce rotating moving or whatever we want but you can easily use color to show um, for example distance exactly what, uh, what we did here we used it for showing the height of a point you can use it to uh, let's see if we use X for example we are saying that the X coordinate of the point is important so uh, it will color it from green to red from here from the left part to the right part so if I give it an X component and let's see it here you can see that it will change uh, and if I give it a Y component, it will go to the Y direction. You can combine X, Y, and Z. You can do whatever you want. You can use a point attractor. It's, uh, it's a little bit complicated than this one, but it's easy. But you can um, use color in your design to show what you mean. It's the best way to show the uh, person and what you mean by close or near height or by more stress or uh, in the structural engineering section you can show uh, it needs uh, it, it has a more stress or a less stress and it's a great tool thank you for watching if you have any questions about grasshopper commands or you uh, or there is a command you need to know and you don't know what it is just ask in the comments or put a comment under this video or in the website and I will record it as soon as possible thank you for